Well, hello, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned, some of you already were going to be uh, talking today about um, how to underwrite a deal, but we're actually really talking about the first phase of it. So we're really talking about just looking to see if it's um, a real uh, deal, if it's um, not even looking at the viability of the economics, but looking at is this you know, basically a scam? Is this potential fraud? And normally we don't like to get all negative like that and add paranoia or scare to the group. But since Friday of last week, six days ago, um, last Friday I received notification by somebody that they were in a deal that looked weird. And I looked it over and agreed with them very quickly. And we saw some things rapidly that showed us that it was absolutely fraudulent. And there was um, some three Gator investors were about to invest uh, 205,000 into that deal. A um, few minutes after posting, I was notified by somebody else that was another set of people that were going to invest in the same deal, another 200,000. So right there was, you know, fraudulent step number two, the fact they were going to double fund it. And then since Friday, I've received four other uh, deals that were the same exact format. So we think there's definitely people preying on the communities. And I'm really, I'm talking about sub to the Gator community, the creative finance community, the deal central community. And so we're just trying to have a little education here and uh, let people know what's going on. So AJ, why don't you go ahead and take it away? And again, people, if you have questions, just put in the chat or raise your hand or say something out loud. Sounds amazing. Thank you for the introduction. And what we are going to talk today, it's super simple. It's going to be first determining what type of lender you are, what type of deals you can do, and what type of returns, and see if it's a scam or not. And if it fits your buy box, you know, because this is super important to see what type of lender are you going to be, because it's not the same short term, long term, or you 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 are a type of lender that you might need like depreciation stuff. So first we are going to talk about like what type things you take in consideration when you are going to lend is the first one is going to be the goals that you are trying to achieve doing lending, you know, because it's not the same goals. If you have a ton of money and you have an active income and you need depreciation, so you will looking for a private money lender that is going to look more for depreciation benefits. Or maybe you're uh, someone that is a nurse. Uh, I have a few lenders that they are nurse and they are doing a really good money, but they can lend for a long time. So I shall say, say an example like that. So it's like quick 30 to 180 days, I will say, um, what type of return of investment they are looking for. And all that good stuff. So that's something that definitely you should do first before you start lending is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just think what type of um, lender are you. Thank then you. another thing that we have to really take in consideration that for me is one of yeah. the most Thank important you. things is the comping. So what is comping for those that they don't know what is comping? Comping is basically oh yeah. see hey. what type of project are you going to do. Uh, or the actual invest investor is going to show to you and if it fits your criteria and how you can collaborate with other data because this is all about data you know there is nothing like the after repair value is going to be 100k more because i make the flip and i'm going to put a high end no the market is going to determine what price is going to be so that's definitely something that i'm going to show further in the in in the zoom like how to underwrite and comping um like really quick just to see what parameters we are um then another thing that we have to take in consideration is what type of experience this investor has how many deals they make how good they have a they have another lender that they can collaborate and say you know this is a guy that they make good amount of money doing this kind of investment um on the experience side like i have a lot of and for all lenders out there always lending is it's involved risk same as investments but using these kind of methods and considerations we are going to 
reduce the risk and maybe one out of 10 is going to go wrong, but with the other 10, you will make a ton of money. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't want to lose money. So this is the way that you are going to avoid losing money. Um, another thing that taking consideration is going to be what type of return are you looking for? Like I have a lot of lenders that they are looking for high ROIs uh, instead of monthly. Um, that means a lot of risk, you know, because the investor has to make more money to pay you how much money you they owe to you. So less return, it's less risky to be like that. Um, so going to comping, what I use, what I really use to comp is Redfin, Privy, what's ARV, it's after repair value, if it's a um, fix and flip, or it's a ver, or if it's a subject to or creative finance deal, I'll always do ARV as well, because I hate those kind of deals that they are super underwater or the ARV is the same as the purchase price that you are buying and you have to put 30, 35 grand into it or 50 sometimes. Um, then another thing that I super take in consideration is have two to three similar, solid similar houses on the same neighborhood. I'm not talking about like four miles, five miles away because that doesn't matter. Um, it's always going to depend on the exit. But if you are trying to compare an apple, you have to compare with an apple, right? You can't compare with a banana because it's going to go wrong. Like, I, I'm going to do an example. I, I know someone that um, they lend something around 300,000 into a deal. It was like 150 for the purchase, 150 for the renovation. And when they showed me the comps, the closer comp was seven miles away. So how are you going to come some properties that they are seven miles away? It, it, it doesn't make sense. Another thing that I super take in consideration is the average zip code. Um, what is that? It's I go to Redfin. I'm going to show right now how it how it works. You put the zip code and you see what is the median price. So if you are doing a fix and flip, and the after repair value of the zip code is 400k, and you are trying to sell at 500k. Yeah that will take no problems but it's going to be difficult to sell because it's the most expensive deal in the zip code area so that means that you are pushing the after repair value so i really don't like those, those kind of deals i like always be under the average of the zip code um someone in the chat want to send me a property to underwrite and comp in, in live or do you want me to put an actual um property that I have on my CRM. Put it on the chat or unmute yourself and I will be open to underwrite a property like you have it right now. Okay, I'm going to use one of mine. So let's pick, I don't know, let's pick San Antonio, Houston. Like San Antonio, so let's pick, let's pick this property right now. I have a property that a wholesaler sent to me earlier, um, about three days ago. Can I give that address? Because sure. I'm finding that any properties that this wholesaler is sending to me, um, my numbers never work out. So I sure. pass on all his deals. Okay. I well, I don't know who was it, um, but put it on the chat. Put it on the chat and I will I will underwrite that deal for sure. Naomi, I think I accidentally muted you while trying to unmute me. So if you want to come back on, my apologies. I think if you mute her, it's going to, you have to give permission to her to unmute herself. I think I did. Okay, let's wait like one more minute. She, Naomi, sent us the address. And one thing that I really want to talk about is I hate 
those kind of zip codes that they are now movements on the area that I'm going to show what is a good market on it. That is basically a compare of active deals and pending deals. Like if there is 10 active deals, I would like to at least have three pending on under contract properties on it. Um, I like to see at least two to three fix and flip on those 10 properties that they are on it. Hey, AJ, uh, I'm, you're, yeah. you're sharing your CRM screen. I'm not sure what you were. Yeah, talking. I know. I know. I'm okay. waiting on Naomi to put okay. the property on the chat. Cool. I put it in. Thank mm -hmm. you. Amazing. Sacramento, California. So I'm not an expert in Sacramento, but definitely I can underwrite this deal for sure. So let's start here. So first I like to, so you can see that this is really close to executive airport. That's something good. And that's something that it doesn't go to appreciate too much because the loud and everything. So if you are going to do like an Airbnb or you're close to an airport, that's good because it attracts more people to get for one, two nights and then leave. But if you are going to do a fix and flip or something like that, I wouldn't recommend besides to an airport just because it's, that's personal opinion as well. And some of my mentors show me that and I always go with that. Um, then we can see it's a two bedroom, one bath. Um, 808 square feet. Um, the estimate is 345. This is something to take in consideration, but it doesn't make nothing. It's just a compare of properties. You know, it's nothing that we, we should take super in consideration. It's showing right here what is the zip code. Um, they are two. This is a comb right here. It's a two bedroom, one bus, 8762 square feet. But let me go here first. I got you. Yeah, I'm just saying my personal opinion on it. Um, purchase price is 270. Price is purchase assignment free contract, new roof, new water heater, updated kitchen stains, appliances. Um, can you send me a pictures of the property, please? Just to take a look at it on it. So we can see it's all in 2015. Zoning, this is something that I really like to take a look at it. This is a really nice house to add value on it because you can see you can build an ADU or build another family. I'm not familiar with permits and things on California, but this is something like it's showing that it's an R1 and it's going to be able to create another a single family on the back or an ADU. And it's used commercial and that's really good. We have right here the... Oh, we... Hey, AJ, question yeah. for you. Um, sure. I'm familiar with that area and the executive airport doesn't get a lot of traffic that I know of, but it's um, kind of a, I don't want to say sketchy area, but it's not exactly the nicer area. Maybe a sea level. Gotcha. Um, does okay. that make a difference? I, I'm just saying about the airport that, as you can see, like you are saying that it's not a sketchy area, but it's a low quality area. If you are going to buy a fix and flip, a high quality fix and flip, I really don't want to be in front of an airport that it's all day coming through people, you know, uh, a lot of noise of airports. So that's personal opinion. Of course, you can make a ton of money flipping in front of an airport. And how I say, um, like it's, if you're going to hold the property, I really don't mind because maybe it's going to bring a lot of traffic. Like we have a property really close to Houston uh, airport, Bush airport. Um, and the property, it's really good for Airbnb because there is a lot of people going and having there for two nights. And so I think that's, that's something that it makes sense to to have it it's just personal opinion on that side i don't know if yeah. that makes sense for for the airport as far as i know it's just a ga airport general aviation so it's not um it's not going to have commercial flights to it gotcha 
So this is one thing that I like to see the actual neighborhood of the property in the last 30 days, it was only one property listed, three, uh, three properties sold. So that means that there is not too much activity, but the median days on market is like, it's really good, 36 days on market. And 96% of the properties sailed on two lists. So if they listed for 300, they sold similar around that price. And the median price is 300K. So that's something to take in consideration. They are saying that the ARV is 350. Yes, the ARV is 350, but the median price on the area is 300. So that's something to take in consideration. If you go to the zip code, you can see the zip code is much hot, hot because they, they went 29 um, listing properties and 33 properties sold. So they sell overpriced, so that's super good. And 14 days median market, so that's super good as well. And the zip code is 450, so that's really, really good. In Sacramento, I really don't take too much in consideration about that, just to see what is the direction of the market. Um, Sacramento County, uh, single family house. Number of home solds, you can see like we went in January, the worst time of the market, we went to 180 and right now we are at 250. So it's definitely going up right now but it's look like it might go down a little bit with the economy going right now um market competition it looks like it's super like it's a lot of competition on the market so that's good um i really like to see this type of thing if i'm doing a fix and flip so the schools are really good it's 7 10 it's 7 out of 10. This one is a really good school, 1.1 miles away. So that's really good to have in consideration. So they're asking for... Okay. Yeah. Sacramento is fucking hot. I didn't know that. I'm going to put everyone in, in contact with one of my guys that they really do sacramento so you can take a look at it let's see the property right now um so it looks like it's it's brand new the backyard is good the roof yeah looks good um bathroom they are updated Flooring is good. This looks like a really solid, like well-maintained property. It was built in 950, so definitely it's had a lot of updates on the property. Um, it has a nice backyard. Yeah, I'm not saying that you are going to do an Airbnb on particular this one, but if you can add value to it, then you maybe can build a similar house on the backyard or an ADU and a, and a studio on it. You know, that will bring up a lot of value on the property. So, an example, if the ARV is 350, you can get it for 400. You know, that's comps that you have to do as well. You know, I like to go on Redfin and put like properties on the zip code and put Casita and see what other comps i'm having so the property looks really really solid like i there is definitely more than 10 15 grand that you have to put into it of course you have to walk it and do a full inspection on it but for for my view it looks really really solid um so going back to comping so estimate looks solid um I'm going to go here to see what recent house they sold. You can see this one is a smaller lot. It's a smaller house and it sold for T25. It sold in April 28th, so not too long ago. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about it is that sold. I think it's sold off market. No, it's sold on market. So what I like to do if I'm going to do a fix and flip Got you. I'm going to go to preview and make better comps. In here, I just like to see what is the direction of the market. 
and what type of thick coat I'm going to plant into the house. So yeah, it looks like it was on market. I don't know why it's only have one picture. Um, it looks like it doesn't, it didn't was a fix and flip because you can see like the painting, it was a well-man thing, but it wasn't a fix and flip. So I definitely not going to take this one in consideration. But we have a solid price for 325 right there. Um, we have garage. No, we don't have garage. That's something that definitely we have to take in consideration. Oh yeah, we have garage on a week. Now, can you see me if it has the garage or not? Yeah, it has a garage. Okay, that's good. So we have with this one, 330 is 20 square feet, smaller lot. Let, let's check this one. Uh, I don't know why it's not searching for me. But okay, let's go to preview. On preview, let's put the property. For those one that they don't have preview and you're going to lend money on it, I definitely recommend it for 1,000 a year. Basically, it's going to help you on comping and see properties across. Or I will definitely have a realtor friend that can pull up list on the price. So when I'm comping, I don't like to pass boulevards or avenues. So I'm going to do like this. I'm going to take in consideration this part right here, but I definitely wouldn't. So I will do like that. So our property is right here. We have a comp, a comp right here, 294. We can see here like square feet, 810, 175. Why is not working? I think it's because it's public record data and it's not a, um, maybe they don't have uh, actual MLS data here on California. I'm not familiar on it. Um, but we can see that the lot side, it's super solid. It's almost everyone has the same square feet. This one sold not too long ago, really, really close to our property that we are comping at 305. see this property why is not charge i don't know if someone here on the market of california why is not charge me the the actual properties is because silo maybe silo will have it i think this is the comp that you was referring i'm going to take a look at it, this one right now why i'm taking this as a comp not not yet, but you can see same square feet, same ear build, uh, same level, same garage, same bath, same bathroom, almost same lot side. So and it's super close. And I I would I wouldn't cross like you see this boulevard is not being crossed. 13th Street looks like it's a busy street. We have a nice uh, avenue right here, so we are beside this street right here pike village street and bay avenue right there and so let's go to silo this one sold for 366 this was definitely a fix and flip i don't know why it's not charging i'm a little mad about it i want to see the actual prop the actual picture of the property when they sold it and it sold on december so that's that's a no-no for me. And I don't know why it's saying it's a 3-2. It's maybe they make uh, permits and they put a bigger property on it. Uh, check. Okay, let me check this one. 960. I'm pretty I'm going to check it. So, okay, this one's sold super close to ours. It's a three bedroom, one bath. That's something to take in consideration. Uh, it's sold for 258. It's a little bit bigger than ours. Um, so making that adjustments, um, I can pull a link right now so you can see my rules, but I will discount at least 20K for a bedroom. And another, I will say like 10K for 
if, if it's going to be a square feet. So I will say like 25K less on the 260 that this property sold for. So we should be roughly at choose 58 less 25K, let's say 15K on the bathroom and 10K on the square feet. We are at, we are at 333. So I will see, say 335, it's a good come for it. I don't have the interior picture of this house. Um, so for me, this is something that I really like to look that it's three active pendings on the area as well. Um, I will say the ARV of this property, it's 335, 340 um, on the end. If you're going to put 10K on renovations, I can put my calculator right really quick. This is a super easy calculator that I have that I use. This is an actual property that we are buying with Tony that we are going to do a pair. So if we go here, we change. This is our actual property. So you are saying that you are buying for 270 plus closing cost. I will say 275 at least, 277. Rehab, 10K. I will put 15K and 5K over budget. Of course, you have to definitely go and ARB, 335. It's 810 square square feet, three, let's say 355 here or 350. So this is my actual, if the market price will drop 10%, that I really don't think so on, on that area because it's super solid. Um yeah, it's it, it looks like without holding calls. So I will put if you are doing that, then you will have 15 to 20 grand, 17 on holding cost so literally the profit it's almost nothing on it and if you're going to do a bear you're going to lose money on it 57 and you will hold the property so for me this is definitely not a deal it's something more like a long-term play on this particular case um naomi it's like that's what i really don't like to be at i like properties that i can add value to it um i don't know if you have different thoughts on it naomi feel free to on the lucy yeah i didn't that i did not think it was a good deal uh either but this wholesaler is sending me many properties that the numbers just don't work out and i do have privy and prop stream but i also check uh, against zillow so I, i'm I'm a very thorough researcher when it comes to the properties. Of course. But I, wanted to see, I wanted to get someone else's opinion on this. Of course. Um, the only thing that I like about this property to be true with you is the zoning area, um, that it's allowed to build another single family house on the back or an ADU. So what you can do. But it's only 5,000 square foot on the lot. Yeah, it's only five. That's why it's only almost five fifty five hundred square feet on the lot. That's why. Yeah, really I'm really small. sure. Yeah, but I think you can build a LDU on it. Um, it's just for me, it's not the deal that I'm going to fix and flip it. Uh, it can be a good deal that maybe you will do as a long term rental on it. Like maybe you buy it for two seventy seven with closing cost um 
the actual rent comes, what I'm seeing is like between 1800 square feet, um, monthly income. So that's definitely not something that you can do it. Their garage can be converted to an ADU rents are top. Yeah, that's true. You know, you can put another unit on the garage. It looks like it wasn't. Hey, AJ. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get you too into the weeds on this one because we still need to talk about stuff. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Go ahead. So anyway, let's keep going. Okay. But yeah, that's a quick comping on the property. How That's how I comp and how I came with ARVs. Um, but yeah, let's go back to here. Uh, so I use Redfin Privy, what is the ARV? Two, three solid comps. We have the two, three solid comps and the ARV of the zip code. So that definitely don't think it's a good deal, on my opinion. Then another thing to take in consideration if you are going to lend money to someone is going to be the experience that this investor has, like how many deals they make in the in this year. What area, like if it's a good investor, they are always going to be on the same area or in the same specific neighborhoods. Um, what investors, years of, of experience, if they have referrals, uh, what are what type of ROI they have on their projects, that that's super important. Like, personally, if I'm buying a subject two deal, I'm not going to take nothing below 25 to 30% cash on cash return without taking consideration, payoff, uh, long-term uh, depreciation, appreciation, and payoff. So it has to be net pure cash flow. So that's why I like to have multiple exit strategies. And this is another super good question to us is how they are acquiring these particular properties, because if they are acquiring this property for wholesalers, that's super good. But at the same time, it's difficult to scale. Um, um, yeah, they are paying that ton of assignment fee, but if they did make sense, you know, I, I buy properties from wholesalers. It's just, they sometimes they don't have the best ROIs like this one particular. They probably have it at 250 and they bought it at 250 for us. It might be a really good deal because you buy it at 250 and you put 10K and you can sell it for 350 or convert an ADU and cash flow like crazy. You know, uh, you, you can make a 1% rule on the property. Um, another thing that is super, super important is how the lender is going to be protected. I always like, I know people that they wire 200K to a bank account, you know, without nothing, without having the paperwork in place before sending the money to title company. Um, so always talk with an attorney, use your personal attorney and put the paperwork before sending the money to title company on to personal account as well. The another thing to take super in consideration that you have to be aware of promissory notes because the promissory note is nothing that is going to determine it, like if you can have your money back and um, be aware of second position liens. The only way to be on second position liens if you are doing like a lock box, something that is going to came on deal central, but I I don't want to talk more about it because I'm not super informed about it. But basically, you can have the deed of the property and you will be on second position. So, yeah, it was a really, really quick uh, underwriting stuff, how to be protective, how to be able to underwrite a property, comp a property on the right way, and how you can have estimates on the properties. Um, so that's how I personally, of course, if I'm going to do a deal, I pass two, three hours seeing what type of neighborhood they are, what type of neighborhood it's, if it's criminal space or there is no, um, so yeah, that's why I like to be on always like on particular, uh, places. Like I like San Antonio. Um, I like Houston. I like central Florida. And I like Washington DC right now because I study the market and I see that it's a really strong market. Um, but yeah, 
that's basically it. If you, someone has questions about it, it was like a super, super simple first phase of underwriting and how you can avoid scamming. Just knowing what is the ARV, making the questions and making the right question. If you make the right question to the scammer, they are going to came on their on the same path. You know, they are going to you are going to understand if they are scamming you or not, if you make the right questions only. Like if you talk to them and you say, show me a hub of a deal that you purchased on the past two months and half of the property is selling the property after you repair and fix it up and sell it on the upper market and they don't have it, that means that they are scamming you, you know? So I don't know, Tony, if you want to add a little bit more about it, but it was like a super simple stuff on the phase one then it's going to get more complicated when we are going to go in deep on the arv and all the good stuff right right yeah no that's good stuff um i guess our the biggest things that we're recommending right now is to really really look before you do lending that there's some kind of security behind this so the deal that we saw last week was a <clears throat> excuse me a eighty thousand dollar property according to Redfin, um, and they claimed that it was being sold for one hundred and forty thousand dollars, which is crazy town. Hey, Jane, let me share screens, would you? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Michelle, I'm going to go to that question after. Okay, just the second share screen. So I'm going to show you the actual property that was involved here. Okay. So this beauty right here, <clears throat> the person that was looking for funding was claiming that they were buying it for $140,000. Now this thing is a knockdown house with projects beside it in a rough part of Chicago, as you see by the map right here. So this group of investors was going to wire to them $205,000 to be secured by this place right here. Now, I don't think I'm being too negative to say that that's probably not a great deal. Um, because again, if everything goes sideways, what you're going to get is secured by this house right here that really needs to get knocked over. So if, if people want to invest like that, they sure can but they should be investing in something where there's actually some equity in the deal, the numbers make sense. And if I was to loan on this um, for the renovations, they were gonna put another 65,000 renovations. They claimed for 65,000, they'd put into this house and this house would be worth something like 400 or 420,000. And they're dreaming. Um, if I was to loan on this one, um, I wouldn't, but let's say I loan on this one. I maybe loan maybe fifty thousand against an eighty-four thousand property if there's no other liens on it. And then beyond that, if they're going to do construction work, I would do it like a regular construction loan is, which is basically putting out money as prog progress occurs. In this case, they were being asked for two hundred five thousand dollars up front, being secured by this. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if you caught the other part. There was at least two groups that were going to do the same exact deal. So that's kind of like selling a house twice. Um, pretty darn illegal. So um, problem I have with this is that we've seen, we keep seeing this pattern repeat and repeat. And what's very, very common <clears throat> is, you know, those of us who are in sub two or in Gator are very um, comfortable with sub two and Gator people. And what's often being done here is people from the outside are contacting gators or sub twos and asking them to wrangle a deal for them. And so then credible people are going out and pitching these deals without doing their due diligence. And people in the community are thinking, oh, hey, those are good people. I've seen them on Zooms. I met them at a meetup once. I trust them. Well, you're not really dealing with them. You're really dealing with the guy that's trying to sell this property multiple times at an inflated rate. 
So we're just trying to get the, the heads up out there. There's a ton of great deals out there. There really are. This is an incredibly high opportunity market right now. We just want to make sure that people are smart about it. With all that rambling, let's open up. People have questions. Unmute. So hop out there. Yeah, I go into Michelle put like, what if it's your first deal lending for? So of course your first uh, lending deals are going to be tougher than the futures because you don't have relationship with lenders first. But if you really show this kind of stuff to the lenders, like you go straight forward to them, like I never make a deal, but I have these comps right here. I have these of my contractor. I have two contractors walk the property. I know I'm super confident that this is going to be the ARV. I have this agent that is going to help us selling the property and is going to show us what is going to be the market flowing and you are really putting the work on the project. If it's a good deal, it's going to get funded. Like that's how the central started. You know, you can get funded if you have a good deal. It's just you really need to have a good deal to get funded. And if you are doing your first deal, it's going to be tougher to raise that kind of capital for sure. But if you have the right numbers and you know the area and you can prove to the lender, they are going to lend on you. It's just, you just need to start not with that crazy project that you are going to build four floors and you are going to add a crazy amount of value and everything. It's just go with data. It's so easy to show data right now. And we are in 2023. You can show 10 comps around the neighborhood and at what price are you going to buy the property at? And that's how you're going to find lenders on it, you know? Thank you. Thank you, Augustine. For sure. So AJ, would you ever, would you mind if people ever reached out and had you do a quick glance at the deal? As an yeah, I don't, okay. I don't mind doing a quick underwrite on deals. Um, I go into put my email on it, uh, on the chat. It's just I need to have like at least go to Redfin, see how much is the property value, what type of, you know, a quick underwrite on the property. Um. Sure, share me. That's my email. Um, like I need pictures, address, access to the property as well. We are buyers as well. So if you have a property on San Antonio or some someone around Texas, Central Florida, Washington DC, and I'm going to determine it right now about California and Sacramento because I think that's super, super hot area as well. Um, picture address access to the property price that's what I will need for for actual property to do a quick underwrite on the deal yeah, some more place. yeah can I ask a question, Agustin, while you're on that? Yeah, sure. When you're underwriting, um, obviously you're specific on those criteria there that you need. How long does it usually take you? Because I've done some underwriting, but I feel like it takes me so long and to do it. <laughs> so I'm underwriting 20 to 25 properties a day. So like in five minutes, I can know if it's a good deal or no. And after that, I, so every deal is going to be like, I pass five minutes, I say, no, it's it's a shitty deal. So I pass on it. But if it's a good deal, I make more research about it and go to another scale of underwriting. After I go to another scale of underwriting and I think it's a good deal, I continue researching about that deal till I make my decision. One time I made my decision, I never go back again. Like I say, this is a deal and I make everything about the market I already understand and I, I will know all the objections that a lender or my 
partner Tony will have on the deal. And I will show proof of the actual ARV and everything. Um, basically, that's how I underwrite the deals. Like, So we are doing a fix and flip right now. Fix and flip, no, we are going to do a bear on it because the numbers make so too much sense. And the ARV for the property was, was literally at 280. And the lender came at 280. So it's super easy to underwrite right now. It's just the data is there. You have to have the, the right data and it's going to, you can prove to the lender if he is wrong about it because lenders can go wrong on appreciate on appraisals as well. Um that's how that's why I pass on so many opportunities because I think like 90, 95% of the deals are shitty. My deals, no, the deals that they send to us. Yeah. Essentially, when, when cause I'm throwing him addresses all day long, um, and essentially what he does is sort of like a triage at a hospital, right? So they come in the door, he takes a quick look at them, and probably half or more get thrown away in the first, what, two minutes? Yeah. Um, and that's just by taking really quick numbers. And that's kind of like what I was talking about the earlier deal, when it just doesn't make any sense at all. Next, there's only how many million more properties available and deals available. So he does a quick triage first to see if it makes sense. Next one to see if I could see even priced in right. And then is when you start looking at like, okay, exit strategy, pad split, long-term rental, short-term rental, all that kind of stuff. And that's what takes the time and finesse. But um, I just can't help overemphasizing that if you get into a deal and you're just not sure, reach out to other people that you know that, um, have experience in them, just get other opinions. Because one thing I do for sure is I fall in love with deals really quick. And it's like, that's my deal. I want that deal. And having AJ there who is um, uh, heartless on these things, he's like Mr. Spock with zero emotion. He looks at it and like, horrible deal or good deal. And I kind of gr grumble a few times and we move on to the next one. That's really helpful to have people that don't really have any skin in the game. They don't know the relationships. They don't know the dreams and all that kind of stuff. To just kind of take that um, subjective approach to it and see if it makes sense. You know, keep, typically, that'll keep you out of trouble. And it sure doesn't need to be us. But I mean, honestly, it's scary to even offer his time or my time on this because there's a lot of deals out there. But if there's if you need other eyes, we're glad to take a quick glance at it. Other questions? Thank you. I'm going to put in the chat my personal comping rules. So every everyone can ha have it. It's super simple. Um, it's basically I'm going to share my screen a little bit. And this is what I'm going to show in the next underwriting class. That is going to be all over about comping. Location, scheme, school districts, change things. No more than 100 or 200 square feet. I'm about 10% on this, 10% range on it. Uh, stay within... 250 square lot size must be within 10 years of construction. This is because not every deal is the same. You know, you can be, you can underwrite a 90, 50 property and you are underwriting with a 200 or 2000 construction and it's completely the same different stuff. So bathroom and bathroom will depend to 10 to 25, uh, bathroom, uh, 10k best comps are closest and most recent source always be conservative like this is key this is super key same story only don't cross major roads don't leave the subdivision pools they don't pools maybe in florida or really hot places 10 to 15 per pool um, siding traffic commercial this is really important like if you are on a major avenue you definitely will have to have a 20k discount on the property because how i tell you it didn't appreciate too much and people people don't want traffic people don't want love 
So that's why I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put this on it right here. So you have it. Okay. Someone has some more questions about it? Okay, if not, we'll call it uh, an evening. Um, again, um, if you have, if you need to reach out to us or have other questions, feel free to ask. I'll be, I'm, I'll be posting this video in the next couple hours on the dealcentral.io webpage. We have a videos page where we post all of these videos like this, comping, how to get private money, uh, how to work the site. We do our Shark Tank um, uh, offering, our videos of our Shark Tank, things are listed on there. We've had really good success with those recently. If you have deals that you're trying to get funded, that's a really good way of doing it, or deals you're trying to sell. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit the pause button here with the stop recording.